Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room and today we are going to take a fat quarter bundle and a free pattern and we're going to make a quilt. I was perusing the internet as I oftentimes do looking for free fat quarter patterns and I ran across Figo, Figo, Figo fabrics. I'm not honestly sure. I'm not sure of the correct pun I am not sure of the correct pronunciation. I think I'm going to call it Figo. If you all know what it really is, let me know. And even better, does it stand for something? So I need 12 fat quarters and this is the pattern. I will put a link to this pattern in the description below. Alrighty, now they put this pattern together with Halloween fabrics, but it shouldn't matter. So let me go through my blank quilting company fat quarter bundle. I have 15 fat quarters and I only need 12. So I am going to have to leave three of these behind. Let's see which three I leave. Okay, this is a fat quarter bundle from Blank Quilting and it is called Nitty Gritties. I love that name. These are the three fabrics that I chose not to include. They just, they just didn't speak to me. The first thing that I need to do is move this camera back. I don't know why it's so close up. Oh! Much better. The first thing I need to do, according to my pattern, is I need to pick two of the light fat quarters. So I chose this one and this one. Now these two fat quarters will be cut differently than the rest of the fat quarters. Ah, cutting, that's what I need. From the two lightest fat quarters, cut 24 and a half by four and a half inch squares. And then it gives you the cutting diagrams. From each of the 10 remaining fat quarters, cut four eight and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. And again, it gives you the cutting diagram. So let's get these boogers cut. Then we're gonna start sewing. This is gonna be, we're gonna go around the world really quick. Although it's around the block, but you know, I'm thinking world. The cutting instructions for each of your white or light fabric fat quarter, they're different. So I am not going to stack them one on top of the other. So here I've got a fat quarter. I am going to cut off my selvage so that I can get a straight edge. I have a fresh blade in my rotary cutter so I'm not going to worry about not cutting nicely. All right so here I want four and a half by four and a half inch squares. So I can go by this measurement here and I've got a four and a half inch mark. Let me straighten my edge. That's gonna make it a lot easier for me to cut straight. I'm going to cut as close to the edge as possible so I don't lose any of my fabric or lose much, I'll lose some. Now, let's measure four and a half inches. Now I do want you to see 
they aren't cutting the whole four and a half inches, but this here is just excess. So I'm not gonna worry about the fact that I'm cutting that So there's one four and a half inch strip, four and a half inch strip, four and a half inch strip, and then it shows that it's cutting a little piece of binding. So if you want a scrappy binding, you can cut a little piece of binding. I think I'm going to leave that alone for right now. So I will just set this aside. I will bring over my other fat quarter. So now I want four and a half inches and I'm going to cut two strips. All right, now I need to subcut my four and a half inches into four and a half inches so that I have the centers of my block. And I'm gonna put them next to each other. And then I'm going to cut four and a half inches. So I can cut both strip sets at the same time. But, not have all the bulk. So that's five and five is 10. And I have the 20 centers for my blocks. The rest of my fat quarters are going to be cut the same. So I am going to have three stacks of three. I'm going to line them up on the selvage edge because that is supposed to be the straightest part of my fat quarter. So I'm going to straighten my selvage edge and all of the rest of the fat quarters will be cut the same way. So there I've got my selvage. I'm going to turn it long ways and line it up on a line on my mat. Now I'm going to cut one side so I can use this line on my ruler. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to get all of my fat quarter. It's real close here on the bottom. So I need to make sure that I come a little ways over on that side to get it straight. And now what I'm going to do, according to the instructions, is I am going to cut four eight and a half by four and a half rectangles. So four and a half is going to be this way, and eight and a half will be this way. So eight and a half and eight and a half is 17. So I should have 17 inches of fabric and I have just 17 inches. So my ruler is actually eight and a half inches. So I'm just going to line it up along the edge of the fabric. Eight and a half. Makes it kind of easy. So there's my eight and a half. I'll line it up again. inches. All right. Now I want to cut them four and a half inches. So I'm going to do something similar to what I did with the other fabric. I'm going to line one of these strips up along a line on my mat. 
I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And now I want to cut at four and a half inches. Oops. Get my instructions out of the way. So I've got, let's see, I think I need to flip my ruler. Okay, so here is my four and a half inch measurement. I'm going to line up along this four and a half inches. Then I'm also going to make sure that this bottom line is straight and it is. So I'm going to cut four and a half inches. So that gives me my eight and a half by four and a half inch block. And then I will cut another four and a half inches. And I will continue that until I'm done. I'm going to do the same thing with my other fat quarters and then I'll be back. I have stacked all of my pieces together. So I have a center, then I have two of the sides, and then I have the two other sides, and then I have another center. So I just went through, put them together quickly. I didn't get real picky about it. And I will pull from this stack place my block on my table so that I know exactly where it's supposed to be. I will sew it and do the next block and the next block and the next block. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out my block according to the instructions. So you can see there's no way to sew these together without starting with something partial. So what the instructions say to do is take A, fold it over on B, on the bottom half of B, and start two inches down from the top of the seam. So let's move these over here. So here, I'm just going to guess about two inches which this is a four and a half inch, so not quite halfway. So I'll move it, put my needle down. This is easy, and none of it's hard, but this is the easy part. <laughs> so you just sew as usual. Now I'm going to press this open, finger press. So at this point, I have this edge that is a normal edge. So now if I place this in my block layout, you can see that this fits here. So I'm going to sew that. So then we bring this back to the block layout. And as you can see, this lines up here. Now this is where it gets tricky. Now I fold that fabric under when I'm doing the last part of my block so that I don't accidentally sew that. It could happen, you all know how I roll. Just going to fold this over. Now you can either start from where the sewing stopped or you can flip your block over 
and sew on this side. I am going to start sewing where I ended on the partial block because I have my machine set up to take a lock stitch at the beginning of the stitching. So I don't have to worry about back tacking because I will be taking that lock stitch. My block is done, pretty as a picture. As you can see, I have put my blocks up on my design wall. Now before we go any further, I want to thank you all for watching my channel. I would like to thank Linda Lozier who has made comments on my channel. I want to thank Fleur de Linda. You and I are kindred spirits. I would also like to thank some people who have given me cups of coffee. Deborah Holmes, Mother Hen, Sharon Cabrera, Quilt Munns, and Kathy Tanner. And Jenny, it was you that I was talking to. All right, how these are organized is totally up to you. I put them on the wall, I moved them around a little bit, but ultimately, I just don't think you can go wrong with this. So I am going to sew them together and I will be back to show you what this quilt looks like. My quilt top is complete. You know I'm going to say that I really like it because it's all the colors that I love. I did not have a problem with any of these blocks. So a partial seam cannot be that hard because I can do it. So if I can do it, you can do it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Eat some chocolate and be kind to everyone. Until next time. Some of you are not going to like dark chocolate, and that's okay. But today, I am eating a Dove dark chocolate. And dark chocolate is one of my favorites. Even though I know I already told you all that there can be stuff in it that's bad for you, and I always thought it was good for you, like, you know, drinking a glass of red wine. I'm still gonna eat it, just not every day. The correct pronunciation, do that over again.